Don't get wet. Oh. This is bullshit. I just want you to see this and know that this is the story of my life. Like, can you see the sun coming in after it frickin' rains me out of everything I'm doing? And then the sun comes out. Anybody that lives in my area knows that this year has been like frickin' Atlantis. Like, it's been raining non-stop and it's just a bunch of crap. And it's been putting like a really big hold on me doing things in my car because I work and I go to school. So like, I have a few days a week where I can actually spend the quality time doing stuff. And then this happens and my morning off went into my morning spent in the rain. Anyways, thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you are recently subscribed to this channel, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And if you are not subscribed to this channel and you are watching this video, be sure to take a second, run down there and subscribe. That would help me out a lot. Now today we're going to be talking about buying um, used car parts. Now this is something that I really didn't have any experience with when I just purchased my coilovers. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'll link it right up here in one of these corners. Um, but I never had an experience buying used car parts. I mean, I've bought a lot of other things used, um, but car parts, I was, I'm always the kind of person, like I bought my car brand new, so I, I always like to put brand new things on my cars. I just, I like knowing that it's new and no one else has messed with it or broken it or kind of ruined it. I, I don't know, it's just the way I am. Um, but I took a plunge and I decided to buy the used coilovers. And now, yeah, I got a wicked deal on them. I actually got ISC coilovers, uh, brand new. The ba guy basically used them for two months last summer, stored his car, and then sold them to me. Um, and I paid about $800 for them, so in reality, that's a pretty good deal compared to whatever they were new. I think they were like $2,000 or something in and around there. So I got a pretty good deal on them. Um, but I didn't really, I wasn't experienced with coilovers. And this is another thing too, is you guys need to make sure you have experience with whatever you're buying. So there's a lot of things that when it comes to buying them, I know a lot about them and I can do a very good job. Like buying a used car, I know what to look for, I know all these things, but I guess I just didn't put enough time into buying the coilovers um, into doing the research before I bought them. So basically what has happened now is I have purchased these coilovers and I installed them, everything went great. They're in great shape, they really are. They're barely even used. Um, and I put them on and I drove them for a, about a month, I would say, but not very often. I just had to brought the truck back out, so I was kind of driving both vehicles. Um, and then I noticed the other day when I was turning the wheel, it was, well, this was about a month ago now, I noticed when I was turning the wheel, it was clicking. So it was going click, 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 click when you turn the wheel and click, 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 click on the way back. And I was like, that's a little weird. Like, I wonder what it is. I Google it. Um, it says it could be spring bind if you're uh, pre it could be spring bind if your um, pre-suspension is too tight. So you're only supposed to have about five millimeters of preload on the ones that I have. Uh, and I went and checked and they were not much more than five, but I readjusted them back to five, whatever, just to check. Um, that didn't solve the problem either. Basically what happened was the guy who had it before me, for whatever reason, had the side, the right side, really, really, really tight. Um, like the pre-coil was like really, really tight compared to the one on the left side. And now I noticed this when I was putting them on, but it didn't phase me at all. Um, I just went, oh, this one seems tighter than the other one. I loosened them down so they're both the same, no big deal. But what he had done was just from driving them last summer, um, I guess, because they were really, really tight on the one side. And uh, so what has happened is the little isolator bushing on the top, the isolator gasket, he smushed it. So he had it way too tight and that gasket basically just oozed out the sides. Um, and now I'm getting spring bind no matter how tight my coil is because the spring is just rubbing on the bare metal because there is no more gasket there. Um, and that I don't really think is a huge, huge problem. Like, yeah, you don't want to drive on it for a while, obviously. Um, not a huge problem, but just something that I don't, I'm not driving it. I haven't been driving it for about a month, which is no big deal. Like it was 10 bucks for a new one, but the only place I can get the proper gaskets for that exact pair of coilovers is actually from ISC themselves. Um, so it's going to take about 15 business days for them to ship it to me. So I ordered one last week, so the car probably still won't be on the road for another, uh, I'm going to give it two weeks. Um, which is, it's fine for me because I have two vehicles, but if you're someone that drives your, like you daily, your project car, whatever, you do a lot of work to your daily, um, just be aware of what you're getting because if this was my daily car, I would have had a big problem because, I mean, I'm sure you could drive it, but what other problems may it lead to while that's happening? I don't really know. Also, thank you to whoever designed this Chevy S10 in 1987 because uh, I have three options for my wipers, off or low, which is a constant, pretty quick low, or high. 
I don't have an interval like set thing. It's either always on or not at all. So when it's just spitting, it's like the worst thing. And I'm gonna lose grip from around this corner because I always do. And I'm right beside a cog. Yep, yep, there we go. And again. And still. Hey, there we go. But hopefully we get uh, everything kind of fixed up. I guess I don't need these now, it's raining again. Um, hopefully we get my car fixed up soon because I have a lot of work I want to do to this truck before I put it back away for the winter again this year. Um, and maybe a little bit more than the winter, that's all I'm going to say. But I kind of want to do some body work, I kind of want to clean it up a little bit. I want to get rid of the rust spots, make it nice. Um, and there's a lot of stuff I want to do to the car too that I just, I, I can't, I not can't, I'm just, I haven't been doing. But be sure to stick around because I will be doing a lot of stuff to the car and this truck both this summer. And uh, I'm not going to keep you guys on board you today. I just really wanted to tell you if any of you guys are in the market for anything and you're looking at used or you're, you're about to buy used, just please make sure you know what it is you're buying because you, if it's your only car that you're working on, you don't want to end up in a situation like I'm in where there's the potential to not be able to drive your car if it's your only car. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I will catch you next time. Thank you guys. Wow.